You are watching WPTV, award-winning college television. Welcome back to the desk. The Pioneer softball team is back, is heading down to Florida to play some spring training games. And here with me to break it all down is Andy Gavin, Michael Milligan, Andrew Ballesteri, and Mark Brandt. Guys, the, the William Patterson softball is back in action, and they started their season down in Drew yesterday. Valley, take us through this one. Yeah, the Pioneers took two tough losses at Drew as we take a look at the stats. Pioneers get outscored in this one 18-5 over the two games. Get out hit 400 to 308 on the batting average side. The OPS Pioneers hit about 800 OPS. Rangers over 1,000. And then the ERA is a big difference. 7.2 for the Pioneers, 269 for the Rangers. Pioneers lose both of these games in the doubleheader. Yeah, it's tough to start your season off with two losses, but keeping it with you, what is something that they did well in that game? I like I, I like the lineup changes between games one and two. You know, we saw uh, Haley Weinberger and Haley Backo. They switched in game one. Weinberger was two, Backo was eight. They switched that up in the second game, and that's something that I think they need to do. You need to have more consistent th consistency throughout the lineup. Last year, we saw just hitters one through five were you know getting on base consistently. Six through nine wasn't able to. So I think if you have people like Weinberger, Backo. Even Hutch, you know, even if she's, uh, you know, the, those three down there, if you have two of them down there, I think that definitely would help you out. Yeah, spreading the lineup is key. But, Michael, I'll, I'll swing things over to you. What is something that they did well? Definitely the early inning plays, what I'd have to say. I mean, they were scoring the most then. They kept the other team at bay then, during that time. It's just keeping that consistent and making sure you keep it that way throughout the middle of the game towards the end. That's how you're going to win these games. I and mean, I think they did a good job. Just got to work on it for the rest of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, what did you say? Uh, for me, the fielding really stood out. <clears throat> you know, it was pretty clean, not too many errors over the two games, uh, but eight players with a fielding percentage of 1,000. I mean, pretty impressive to me. I mean, it, it gives me good omen for the rest of the season in terms of fielding. Yeah, absolutely. Andy, close us out for this question. I'll be quick. Yeah. This isn't a st statistical answer. It's effort because Drew played eight games. We have played none. That was our first two games yesterday. And we fell behind in the first game. We didn't get down on ourselves. We came right back in the second game. We were in it for a while. We ended up losing that one. But, hey, build off that, move forward, and that is really good. Yeah, absolutely. But transitioning from the good to the bad, what are some things that they need to improve on after these Drew games? And I'll start off with you, Andy. I'm going to say scoring opportunities. Runners in scoring position, bring them home. Play small ball. Do what you have to do to get those runners across the plate. Yeah, absolutely. Mark? No, for me, it's steel coverage. You know, over the two games, um, Drew, I couldn't remember for a second, uh, attempted to steal six times. William Patterson allowed five stolen bases off of that. Now you're getting runners into scoring position. That's how you end up with such a bad scoring deficit. So just working on that steel coverage, I know it's only the first two games, so I'm not worried, but I just think that that's something that they should focus on going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Definitely something to focus on, uh, Michael. Definitely the pitching. I mean, you're giving up 18 runs in two games, 12 of them being earned, and look, 22 total hits. You just got to work on that pitching a little bit. And then once that improves, I can see a nice, bright future for this team this season. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew, close us out for this one. What would you say? You know, they just got to keep the bats hot. We saw it throughout both games. You know, they got off to really good starts. In the first game, they scored two runs in the first inning. They're barely able to get a hit the rest of, the, of that game. And then in the second game, you know, we saw them score a run within the first two innings, and then they just couldn't. They just couldn't close that gap for the rest of the game. Granted, it's the beginning two games of the season. I'm not too worried, but just need more consistency with the bats moving on. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping the bats or can be consistent, and they should work on that. But, guys, the Pioneers head down to Florida, much like the baseball team. Mark, I'll start off with you. What are some games uh, that you're most excited to see? Yeah, you know, the game I'm excited to see the most is their last game of the tournament, and that's against Manchester University, who currently in the season are 2-0, so off to a solid start. Haven't lost a game yet. Only played two, but it's all right. But last season, they were 23-20, and 20, three games above 500. Not awful, not the greatest, but it's really just the endurance that I want to see from the Pioneers. It's that last game of the tournament. You've already played so many different games. I want to see how they end up closing out the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Andy? I'm going to say Tufts University. They haven't played a game yet this season. You go off last year. They have a lot of returning players, so it's the same team pretty much. They went 40-6. and six. So I'm looking for Tufts University to go 45-1. and one. That one loss to the Pioneers this week. And the Pioneers are going to work off that and head to the NJAC Championship game and win it. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew? i got to go with the first game of the, C of the uh, Florida trip, UW-Whitewater. Uh, we played them back in 2022, lost to them 10-1. to They looked really good in that game. Um, you know, they, obviously they've lost quite a lot of players. So now, you know, 
getting off into a, a good start with the first game of your trip, you know, could just give you that confidence boost throughout the whole week and, you know, make you go on a little bit of run. So got to get a win right away. Yeah, absolutely. Getting the first win is key. Michael, close us out for this one. I'm going right in the middle against Middlebury College. They were 18-17 last season. Um, their batting averages are all close to William Patterson and also their OPS is very similar too. So I think it's a nice matchup against similar teams. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, the Pioneers came in sixth in the NJAC preseason poll. Andy, do you agree with this, way, uh, this ranking? Uh, yes, because, and listen, hear me out. I know they said they're going to win the NJAC championship, but we're, this is a young team. It's also an old team. We, we were talking on Sports Report Monday night. It's like an in-between team. We lost a lot of players. We gained a new player. It's an in-between team. God, see how they mesh. We don't know. They don't really have pitching, for being honest. So if they can get the pitching, they can get the bats going. I say they're going to be in the NJAC championship, but they're deserving of this ranking right now. Prove me wrong. I want to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, do you agree with him? I, I mean, I really don't. I mean, they made the NJAC tournament last season. Yes, they had some key players and leaders move on, but they replaced them. They've got new leaders in that clubhouse. So I, I, I don't know. I just don't really see that six is an appropriate ranking for this team. Absolutely. An Andrew, do you agree with it? Yeah, I think Gavin's a stooge, to be honest with you. I think this, he's absolutely wrong. You know, the Pioneers are not a sixth-place team. They're, they're fourth, maybe fifth. I think they should definitely be there. They deserve it. You know, he mentioned they've got the old town. They've got two graduate students, got plenty of seniors. All of those players make huge impacts on this team, let alone you have some underclassmen who had phenomenal seasons last year in their freshman and sophomore seasons who are moving into a bigger role this year. My concern is pitching, That's but I question, think they can figure question, that out. Mark. And they can figure it out. Yeah, absolutely, Bal. You never fail to make me laugh on this desk. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Michael closes out with this one. I do not agree with the ranking. I think they should be a higher, but just not by much. I think maybe like a place or two. I guess I think they can do maybe a little bit better than Stockton or Kane. But I really don't see too much. Yes, they have a lot of returning players, but the pitching, as we mentioned before, is a huge question mark. They get that settled in. I think they can move up at least two spots in that ranking. Yeah, but let's move off the diamond and onto the hardwood. For the NBA, stick with us on Sports Desk. <laughs> 